Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're working on the D17 today. Uh, we're gonna be pulling the head off of it. And we're gonna check those cylinders out that I've been soaking here, uh, as you saw in that last video. And uh, we're gonna see how that progress is going. It's still stuck, but I wanna see uh, what else we've got in there. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, stick around, cause it's coming up. All right, so we're gonna start stripping down the uh, top side here so we can get the head off of this thing. And first thing we gotta do is uh, remove the manifold. The carburetor's gummed up anyway, so that's gonna come off so that I can get that thing cleaned out and get a rebuild kit in it. Uh, we're gonna need to take our hoses off. We'll need to drain our uh, fluids, radiator out of it. I know we still got some antifreeze in here cause I can see some leakage here. So we need to get that uh, cleaned up and drained out out of the way so that we can continue to work on the top side of the engine here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull out uh, this hood piece, the top part that the hood on either side locks into. The back side we already took off for the fuel tank. Uh, so this side we're gonna be removing two screws or bolts right up here that will uh, remove this from the front nose cone. So I'm just gonna get to work on that and uh, Whenever I need to, I'll interject some stuff in here and we'll get this thing taken off. All right, so I got the uh, carburetor disconnected and it was full of rust, which I kind of expected. Uh, so that one's gonna be interesting to clean out. Um, also over here at the end of the fuel line, you can see that it's completely plugged. So we'll need to be cleaning that out at some point in time. I'll just finish getting the linkage off of that and then we're gonna pull the manifold. Uh, prior to that manifold, I need to go ahead and drain the uh, antifreeze out of it, at least get it out of the block a bit so I don't have to worry about that pouring out of those holes. But anyway, let's flip back to the time lapse and we'll keep moving. All right, uh, so you saw the manifold get unbolted, and I just want to kind of show you a little close up here on what we found in each of the um, ports coming out of the head. Lots and lots of uh, junk in there. Uh, I knew that it was locked up, but I think it's going to be worse than what I'm anticipating. And there's stuff down inside the manifold, and then. Of course, the manifold's got the same crud that we're seeing inside the head here. So, one good thing is, had nice green antifreeze in it, so shouldn't have to worry about any kind of cracks in the block or anything hurt as far as that goes. Um, but anyway, we'll continue working. I've got my antifreeze draining out of the block. I've already drained, as you saw, the antifreeze out of the radiator itself, and I'll just take my hose and wash that into my floor drain here after a while what didn't get caught in the bucket so we're going to continue working on here we'll pull our uh, thermostat housing off those two hoses um, and we're really not too awfully far away from getting the rockers and the shield and all that stuff out of there so that we can lift that head off so we'll keep on trucking
All right, so we've been working the last few minutes just getting the rest of the head stripped down. Uh, we got the bar that runs up here on top between the radiator and what would be the fuel tank, which is gone at the moment. Uh, I had it lined, I got it back and sitting right there. Uh, so anyway, we've got that squared away. We've got our wire harness pushed down out of the way as well. Uh, so the next step will be a couple of oil lines to disconnect uh, from the head here. Um, we will have the rockers. I gotta get the shield off, one oil line here as well. And then I've got those uh, four bolts on top there to get those loose. And then that will allow me to get the rockers off and then we can pull the push rods out and find us a couple lift points and then continue taking the head bolts out. So that's what we're gonna continue doing. We'll flip back to the time lapse and then we'll uh, get that squared away and we'll get this uh, head lifted off. All right, so as you've been watching, we've got everything stripped off the head now. We're ready to actually lift it. Um, the head's not that heavy, but uh, I've got a bad back, so I always use a cherry picker on that. And the bracket that I've got set up is really just to put the whole engine in if I was gonna pull the motor. So uh, just bolt that right up to the studs that hold your rockers down and your valve cover. And I've got you know holes drilled in that thing where I've got everything tightened up there. And we'll just lift against that, and that will give me good control of it. Don't have to worry about um, hurting my back on that, and we'll just lift that thing off of there. So, All right. I'm going to lift this thing up off of there. And we've got a couple of studs right here that that head's going to have to slide up. So I want to get those kind of freed up there. to just lift it on this side because I'm really my lift points are not center of the head so it's wanting to kind of get a little bit of a bond here which is not a big deal wow it's quite interesting what you can find inside an engine further. All of the valves, you saw me use the mallet on the valves earlier, and they are all uh, froze up. Okay, let me get a better look at this thing. I don't even know what that is. But it's not good. Yeah, that motor is a complete rebuild. That thing is toast. All the sleeves are no good, so not good. And looking at the bottom of the head here as well, it is not in good shape either. So we'll need to redo the head as well. Like I said, I don't know what this is. I've never seen anything like it. It's weird. Yep, pretty bad shape. The uh, most of what you're seeing in there is PV Blaster that I was putting in the. Uh, that there is almost like a. Mouse nest 
kind of materials, which I don't know how a mouse would even think about getting in there. They can't fit through that. Spark plug hole, so. All right, well, we know what we got now. Uh, unfortunately, we're gonna have a 100% rebuild on this. I don't know what the bottom side's like. Um, so, you know, when this motor comes out, it will have to come out, of course, and uh, I'll just keep my fingers crossed. I don't have any issues with the cam or the crank. One thing I did want to point out here, and I don't know if you can see it in the time lapse or not, it may have went too fast. But I got a push rod right here that's bent, and then I've got another one down here as well. So I don't know if those were bent prior to the engine seizing, or if maybe it just wasn't quite seized up yet and they tried to uh, turn it over and that's what done it. Not sure. But either way, I've got a couple of push rods uh, that I'm going to have to replace as well. So, yeah. Going to be another project. So we'll be working on this D17 uh, shortly. Um, you're going to see the finishing up videos of this WD uh, project and the WD45 diesel that I've been working on as well. So eventually we'll get over here and we'll get this engine pulled and we'll get that thing rebuilt. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching as always. Please hit like, subscribe, share the video, leave comments below and for something in particular that you'd like to see, whether it's on this D17 or any uh, W series Alice's or 100 series, whatever it may be, uh, let me know and maybe we'll get one in the shop here and uh, be able to go over that for you. I do uh, plan on having a 175 diesel with the Perkins diesel come in this winter and I've got another WD45 diesel uh, that we're gonna be rebuilding. So anyway, lots going on here in the shop. Like I said, again, I appreciate you watching and have a good day.